Hi, I'm Professor Tim Scales. I'm also the director of the Center for Entrepreneurship and the Center for Economic Education here at Indiana University East. We're celebrating 18 years of In Your Business, as well as 35 years of Whitewater Community Television, also known as WCTV. As we celebrate these milestones, we'd like to go back and reflect on some of our earliest episodes of In Your Business. I hope you enjoy those early days. Hi, I'm Tim Scales, the director of the Entrepreneurship Center and the Sam Walton Fellow for Indiana University East. Today, we're working on another episode of In Your Business a program that's put together by Scythe, Students in Free Enterprise. What we like to do is we like to talk to an entrepreneur and we like to discover what they go through. Basically what we find out is there's a lot of risk involved with entrepreneurship as well as a lot of reward. We find that during the adventure we have to look at things like the idea, the plan, and the execution. We always start off with public opinion, then we discover the entrepreneur, learn from them, and we go out in the field and actually see what they're doing. So please join Scythe as we discover entrepreneurship. jumping out of an airplane. I can't imagine that I would ever do that. Heck yes, because my dad's paying for it and I'm ready for the adrenaline rush. It's uh, 20,000 feet in the air. No, <laughs> I am not going to jump out of any airplane. I do not like the fear, the sense of falling. Yes, I'd love to do it. Uh, no. Now, if my life depended on it, then yes, but not for the fun of it, no. I did consider it one time when I worked at another job, we were going to get to do it free. On a, It was on a Friday and Wednesday, my back went out and I thought that that was a sign from the Lord that I should never ever jump out of a plane. So no, I wouldn't. No. Yeah, uh, if I had the right safety equipment. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'd parachute for fun probably closer towards the end of my life, just in case something bad happened. Welcome to another episode of In Your Business. Today we're going to learn from a very interesting entrepreneur, Jamie Prather. Jamie is with Skydive Wayne County. And Jamie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about Skydive Wayne County. Uh, well, we're a skydiving center. We provide first time and um, intermediate as well as advanced skydiving training and a license, <coughs> excuse me, um, service provider to licensed skydivers. We've been in business since 2001, and um, we're located at the Richmond Airport, and okay. we're open April through the end of October. So how did you get started? Well, my parents actually um, started a skydiving center in Waynesville, Ohio, in 1969, so I grew up around skydiving. Okay. And in 2001, I decided to go out on my own and give it a try. Okay. Now, did you acquire uh, skydiving, or did you start your own? No, I started this company on my own. Okay. So, what are some of the steps that uh, one would have to go through if they want to start a skydiving? Well, you'd have to know a lot about aviation and skydiving specifically. Okay. Um, really, it's, it's quite simple. The only barriers you're going to encounter are the industry-specific knowledge that one must have to, to run a skydiving center. Okay. But there are no real licenses or certifications required for the actual skydiving center. Um, that's with the instructors and pilots that fly for you or skydive for you. Okay. Um, there's really not much to it. Okay. But it's a very interesting business because you have everything from somebody who's maybe not been up in an airplane but they want to jump out of one so they come in you have to give them some training and you you do what they call tandem I understand where they strap on with an instructor an experienced diver um, and then you also have the pilots you're working with the instructors I mean you have a whole collection of people you're working with mm -hmm. and that has to make things challenging interesting and exciting it is very <clears throat> Um, there's actually three different ways you can make your first jump. Tandem's just one of them. Okay. So that actually increases the diversity. 
you have different types of instructors that are certified in different types of student skydives, tandem, accelerated free fall, or static line. Okay. What's, what's the most common way for a person to get started? Um, Fifteen years ago, it would have been static line. Due to the marketing of the, from the industry, tandem's really taken over, but one's not really any better than the other. Okay. Now, tandem, I know that's when, when you strap on with somebody, mm -hmm. correct? How, how does the other ones work? Um, static line and accelerated free fall are actually the two older programs. Static line is the oldest. Accelerated free fall came out in 1982, I believe. Okay. Um, you have to go through a four and a half to five hour ground school prior to making your skydive. And the skydives differ. A static line, you get out um, of the airplane at 3,500 feet and your parachute's deployed for you as you fall away from the airplane. It's what people call automatic opening, but it's, it's a static lanyard that's actually packed into your parachute container and attached to the airplane. Okay. You fall away, it extends and opens the container. Um, accelerated free fall, you go to full altitude like a tandem. That's anywhere from 10,500 feet to 13,500 feet. And you have two instructors that exit the airplane with you, and they follow you throughout your entire free fall, which is about a minute long. And then once you deploy your main parachute, they're gone, and you land by yourself, just like the static line. Wow. I think it's got to be exciting. Yeah, it is. <laughs> when did you make your first jump? 1992. Okay. <laughs> when I was 16. You were 16, made your first jump? It was a static line. Okay. Yeah. Were you excited? I was terrified. Yeah? Yeah, until I got in the plane and then I couldn't be anymore. I didn't really have a choice. I wasn't going to chicken out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that has to be a rush. I mean. Yeah, it's amazing. It's really something you can't put into words. Yeah. How soon after the first jump do you go for the second? Well, it depends on. Skydiving's uh, more of an individual progression. Okay. There's no real set. Um, progression as far as time frame except for you have to make a skydive once every 30 days to maintain currency. Okay. But I made my second jump the week after my first. Okay. Your community comes from many different areas. Mm -hmm. I think probably as far out as what? Hour and a half, two hours away? Yeah, there are actually two skydivers that come from Lexington, Lexington Kentucky. Um, that's actually I would say the probably the furthest drive which is about three hours okay. to Richmond. Most of our customers come from Cincinnati or the greater Cincinnati area, Col Columbus, Ohio, Indianapolis, um, Dayton. We've got some customers that come from Muncie in that area. And occasionally we get some Fort Wayne kind of, but you could draw a circle about as wide as that. And okay. that's where we service. We well, have to be proud of that because people that will travel three hours to be a part of your organization, I mean, that, that makes a statement. Yeah, it does. They pass three different skydiving centers on the way here. Wow, <laughs> wow. You're doing some things right and you're doing it well. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Well, tell me a bit about you as an entrepreneur, okay? We always learn about the business, but I always like to learn about the person. Uh, talk about, did you know you are going to be an entrepreneur from a young age? No, actually, um, I originally went to school at the Cincinnati Conservatory of Music. I'm a classical clarinetist. Oh. And um, decided I didn't really want to stay in the music industry, switched my major to anthropology. And um, when my parents, my mom got ill in, okay. in 97, and I started working for them full time instead of just on the weekends and summertime stuff. And it just seemed to sort of be what I wanted to do. I wanted to try to change a lot of stuff in the industry and um, do some innovative things. Okay. And it became a challenge, so. So basically you recognized some opportunities and said I'm gonna be a part of those opportunities mm -hmm. and, and made a difference. Mm -hmm. And, and what do you think? You enjoying it? I am, yeah. It's, it's a lot of work, mm -hmm. but I'm enjoying it. I think it's a really amazing opportunity to have a lifestyle like this. Mm -hmm. What are just a couple of the impacts that you've made, some of the changes maybe? Well, I, I haven't been able to be as far-reaching as I wanted to yet. <laughs> okay. But um, we've changed a lot of how, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the way we handle first jump clientele, um, try to process them a little more efficiently instead of long, extended, drawn out waits. Um, Industry-wide, I've been trying to educate other skydiving centers about basic business practices okay. because most skydiving centers are hobbyist business owners. So they, they don't have a tremendous amount of business 
education. Okay. And um, that's pretty much it. Wow. Really well, it's, it's interesting that, uh, that you developed this passion for business a little later. You know, you really went for what it was that you thought you would do, and then you turned your life around and went after something that you're now enjoying and you're passionate about. Um, the impact you make on the community is huge, though. I mean, all these people traveling in, that, that helps the economy for a local community as well. Mm -hmm. So I know the difference that you've made even for this local airport. And when people think of the Richmond Municipal Airport, they think of Skydive Wayne County. So, I mean, you're definitely a leader in this area, and you should be very pleased with your accomplishments. Thank you. So, um, some of the concerns I guess I have when I think about your business, um, when I first started thinking about Skydive Wayne County, I was thinking about the fuel cost, because we've had a lot of uh, ups and downs with that in the last several months. Mm -hmm. And one of my concerns is I think somebody who would skydive frequently on the weekends, they're having to pay those high fuel costs through the week on their commutes to work and such, then their commute to the airport. And then you're also having to address those in your operation. Yeah. So you're kind of getting hit twice because the wallet's getting hit from your clientele, which may slow some of their activities and then your operation cost. So how do you deal with things like that? Um, I think we're doing everything that we can. We're pretty much just hoping that it changes mm -hmm. at this point. Um, and yeah, it is making a huge effect on skydiving all over the industry. Okay. It is, it's really slowing things down. So. So unfortunately that makes the price of skydiving even higher than if we were to just adjust for fuel costs because now we're adjusting for a lack of activity. Sure, sure. But at the same time, I think that your, your clientele, the people that come to jump, it's, it's such a thrill and enjoyment that it's, it's the price you pay, I guess. And, yeah. And you just, you, you do it. Yeah. What's some future plans? Right now, we just got another contract with the city of Richmond for an additional four years. Good. Um, We've made some improvements in the building as much as we can. It's a leased building, so there's not that much we can do. I'm actually getting ready to try a really new, um, innovative marketing technique for the boogie this year. Okay. And I'm hoping to exponentially raise the registration rate because the lack of activity, uh, instead of an average of 13 jumps per jumper per day, last year it was like three. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> now that was a little unique because that was during Hurricane Katrina. Okay. And a lot of people were just like, because they didn't know how much it was going to cost them to drive home once they were already here for the boogie. Okay. Um, but I'm hoping to increase attendance so that we can at least maintain the same amount of jumps done over that time. Okay. What's, what's, the, what's the date for the boogie? This year it's August 30th through September 4th. Okay. It's a six day event. The weekend is the busiest part. Um, Thursday, Friday, or Wednesday, Thursday is when most people are coming in and setting up. Um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then I'd say half a Monday. It's pretty busy. Tell me how that works. If somebody wanted to jump then during the boogie, they come out, they get signed up, they pay the fee, they jump. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's something, I guess, if, if a person wanted to just see if they could jump out of an airplane, parachute to the ground, it's a great opportunity to do so. They're, they're with an instructor. They're strapped on, the instructor's going to pull the chute, mm -hmm. they're there for the ride? Yeah, essentially. I mean, they can do that. Anyone can, you can come out and make a first time skydive on any given weekend Okay. Um, here. But the Boogie offers um, more, ex more exotic aircraft okay. from all over the country, sometimes world. And um, the capability of probably going for, with more people at a time as opposed to here we will do no more than four at a time. Okay. Four tandem students at a time. Okay. Um, that's simply because of the slot capacity in the airplanes that we normally fly. Um, at the boogie, we have, you know, tremendous amount of additional airplanes that hold a lot of people. Okay. What about the pilots? The pilots for the planes that take the, the jumpers up, mm -hmm. are they pilots to just kind of volunteer to come out and spend time or do you have to actually book them, reserve them, pay them and have them here every weekend? During normal operations? Yes. Um, my father flies for us a lot and okay. Roger, who's a local guy, okay. he's retired, he also flies for us. Um, 
we're very lucky in that sense. A lot of skydiving centers do have a hard time getting pilots. Okay. But um, we have very highly experienced pilots that have been flying jumpers for 15 or more years. And um, just very lucky. Well, I think you're very lucky, but I also think that you've, you've done a good <coughs> job in business. You've, you've <laughs> positioned it. You've made an environment where people want to be a part of it. The airport here is beautiful, mm -hmm. and so people just need to come and experience it. And as they do, they'll see what you're doing, and they'll want to be a part of it too. So, so it's it's more than luck. It's it's a it's a lot of talent <laughs> and work that you're putting into it. And tell me though, every entrepreneur I interview on the show has to answer the question about hours. What kind of hours do you operate as an entrepreneur? You yourself, your commitment to the to the business. Well, because we're seasonal, I have a a lot easier than a lot of entrepreneurs. I think. In the summertime, I will work probably an average of about 100 hours a week. Okay. Um, that's usually from the beginning of April to the end of October. In the wintertime, I probably devote real, actual energy about 30 hours a week. Okay. So seasonal, slow times, 30 hours a week, busy time, 100 plus hours a week. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's, that's quite a job. <laughs> well, Jamie, what I'd like to do is maybe... Um, Meet one of the instructors okay. and, and get to know the instructor on the show as well. And okay. then we'll send Johan to actually do a jump. Okay. All right. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. In addition to interviewing with the entrepreneur today, we're going to have the opportunity to meet uh, Jim Keeney. Jim, you're an instructor and an examiner? Yes, instructor examiner is the, uh, actually the title that I carry around with me. Okay, well tell me, I know what an instructor would do at Skydive Wayne County, but what would an examiner do? The instructor examiner actually teaches instructors uh, to be skydive instructors. It's the just one step above. There's uh, all or somewhere in the neighborhood of about 50 instructor examiners in the world. Okay. And, uh, skydive Wayne County is particularly fortunate because we have two of those 50 right here. Wow, that's impressive. Yes, it is. Now, now, we, we met with Jamie. Mm -hmm. We learned about the business. We learned about Jamie. I'm quite impressed with the whole operation. It's a beautiful airport. It's a great place to come. She shared with us that many people pass other skydiving um, institutions, if you will, to come to this one. Um, what is it? Well, Skydive Wayne County has a, has a rich history. You know, I'm sure that Jamie probably talked to you about the old days in Waynesville, the old uh, Waynesville, Ohio drop zone that opened... Uh, Oh, in the late 60s. That's her parents' operation, That's correct? correct. That's okay. correct. And then they moved over here uh, uh, in the 90s uh, to obviously a much more beautiful facility, uh, a much larger area, better better runways, better facility here for us to work out of, just a better all-around place for the students. We also have a very good safety record, okay. which, uh, of course, everybody's interested in. Uh, uh, not only the people who are going to come to skydive, but we as participants in the sport and, uh, and instructors, we're always looking for the safe way to go. Yeah. Sure. Well, I think it's something you have to take serious. I mean, skydive, we laugh and we say, would you ever jump out of an airplane? And some say, of course, others say, no way. But it's something you have to take serious and it sounds like you do. We do take it very, very seriously because skydiving is, uh, I mean, if you look at the very bottom line, of course, skydiving is a dangerous sport. Mm -hmm. But so is rock climbing, bicycling, swimming. Driving your car to the airport's a pretty dangerous thing to do. <laughs> That's true. But uh, there are uh, procedures that you follow. The United States Parachute Association establishes safety procedures, and we're very sticky about that. We, uh, we follow all of the safety requirements that the United States Parachute Association has, along with even recommendations, okay. because we think it's a good idea. I mean, they are the pros from Dover, and, and we want to be part of that. Okay. How many jumps do you have? 3,287. You keep track of them that, that? Oh, absolutely. We track, we log each jump. Uh, different skydivers do it different ways. Uh, some people, you'd think they're writing a book for each jump that they make. And they can look back 20 years ago and, and see who they jumped with and what they did on that jump, how high they went, what kind of airplane they jumped out of. Other folks put in just a more, little shorter explanation of what went on. But yes, we track our free fall time, how much okay. time we actually have in free fall, okay. and track how many jumps we make. Uh, and part of the reason we do that is because there are certain numbers of jumps required for uh, to be an instructor 
and to, to hold different positions in the skydive community. Okay. Well, I know that here in the Midwest, it's very seasonal. Okay, we have to deal with, with cold and snowy winters. Yeah. What do you do? Well, we still jump here at, uh, at Skydive Wayne County. We'll jump all year long. And it's probably not as bad as a lot of people would think. It's no different than snowmobiling. Okay. Ice fishing, I mean, you, you dress for it. Uh, of course, a lot of us, and me included, will sneak away several times during the winter, go off to the warmer climate. Okay. I'm in Florida several times a year, Southern California, Arizona, uh, you know, seeking the, the better weather. Okay. How cold does it get when you jump? Well, if you figure that you lose about three and a half degrees per thousand feet above 3,000 feet. Okay. So if it's 30 degrees on the ground, and we go to 12,000 feet, then it's about right around zero someplace or a few degrees below zero okay. at jump altitude. Wow. Of course, you're only exposed to that for 60 seconds or so. Well, that's long that's enough cool. to get cold. Uh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool in more ways than one. Okay, yeah. I understand what uh -huh. you're saying. Well, I think we're very fortunate to have you here in the Midwest and to be a part of you know, Skydive Wayne County. Um, I feel very confident and secure with you. Um, Johan is a guest and his parents have, have afforded me the opportunity to have him for three months. Mm -hmm. And during that stay, I feel very responsible for him. Mm -hmm. So for me to allow him to go up in an airplane and jump out, I have to have a lot of trust and I, I certainly do. And I'm gonna trust you with Johan today and let you uh, show him the friendly skies. Appreciate that and we'll certainly take care of him and I guarantee he'll have a good safe time. I appreciate that, mm -hmm. so thanks. You bet. Oh, we're ready to go, I've been waiting for this day. The sky seems perfect and doesn't seem... Yeah, I got a little wind. It, this, this is a perfect day for jumping. Absolutely, can't yes. get better. So you said you're making a skydive. Where, where's your parachute? I need that? Parachute, yeah, man, like you're jumping out of an airplane. Oh, I didn't know that. Probably <laughs> should go back get some more training. I guess. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So you're doing a tandem skydive. I'm doing a tandem skydive. Got good instructor who's going to be with me, and hopefully I remember to pull the shoot in time. So. Do you remember his name though? Jim. Jim, that's, that's right. right. He is going to be your best friend here in just a few minutes. Awesome. So, uh, that's cool. That's a name you want to remember. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, we'll be getting in the plane. The plane's still up there. Right. And I don't know, probably 10 minutes. So, awesome. Uh, Can't we'll wait. We'll see you in the plane. Definitely.
Yeah. yeah. All right. That was an awesome experience, man. If you want to get your blood rushing, this is something you have to do. <laughs> okay. Yo, oh, you're free to go. I'm free to go. So what do you think, Woo! man? Oh, that was... I can see myself becoming a skydiver, definitely. Nice, that, nice. That was, that was pretty extreme up there, especially when you jump out of the plane and whew, you just go flare up in the air. That's, that was nice. Nice. Yeah. How'd your instructor do? He is awesome. I'm definitely going to do it again. Congratulations, man. Thank you so much, Jim. Thanks well, a lot, Kelly. Cool, us. man. Thanks All for right. coming to Skydive Wayne County. Most welcome. Pleasure. This concludes another episode of In Your Business. Today we were, we were joined by Jim and Jamie from Skydive Wayne County. We learned a lot about uh, the whole business and we also learned about the difference in the impact it can make in our community. It's kind of a form of entertainment, it's also a form of hobbyist, but a lot of these people take it very, very serious and it would be their full-time jobs and Jamie certainly is. When you look at the hours that she commits to making a difference in our lives, we have to respect her as an entrepreneur and realize that she is truly a leader. People traveling three and four hours to get here, passing up competitors just to come and be a part of Jamie's operation. I think we have to take a serious look at it. If you've not gone out to the Richmond Airport and seen what Jamie's doing with Skydive Wayne County, I suggest you do. Go out, take a look, see if you could jump out of an airplane. You might be surprised. I think with their safety record and their expertise, you might want to get in their business as well. Thank you for watching.